Hey, hey, hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I've got your gameplay for the T-10M. This is a currently ranked 6 battle rating 8.3 heavy tank in the Russian Ground Forces tech tree and is currently one of the highest BR heavies in all of War Thunder. This vehicle is a beast and a half featuring two 14.5 millimeter KPVT machine guns, which if you don't know are kind of like auto cannons in a way. They're about the strongest machine guns that you're going to get on a ground vehicle and and of course, the 122 millimeter M62 cannon. This is one of the best 122s in all of War Thunder. This might be the best and can feature heat FS and APDS, which are both incredibly useful, of course, depending on what you want to do. Now, that being said, let's go ahead, get into a few matches. This is one of the best vehicles in War Thunder insofar as heavies are concerned. It is a ton of fun. So that said, let's get into it. So here we are with the T-10M. Ooh, got myself a hit and an assist on that. Can't really complain. Anyways, <laughs> when it comes down to the T-10M, this vehicle, despite being a heavy tank and only having a 15 to 1 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio, is actually fairly mobile, at least relatively speaking. This isn't a fast vehicle. I'm not claiming that, nor would I ever. However, and I do mean however, uh, it does perform a bit better than its 15 to 1 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio would suggest. Woo! Holy guacamole. Maybe the, uh, I don't know. A anyways, <laughs> not going to say any uh, ill-fitting jokes here, at least not yet. So if you guys don't know also, I am a very um, offensive person. I can be extremely offensive, and that goes for my jokes doubly, but not all the time are they necessary. Now, that being said, uh, this vehicle is very, very powerful. Now, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people might disagree with me, um, I do prefer to use the APDS on this over the Heat FS, simply because I feel like APDS has a wider range of applications. Uh, whereas Heat FS is really just better for, like, in my opinion, like heavy tanks, M103, for example. The APDS can be used uh, at longer ranges. Being that this does not have a laser rangefinder, it does help in that regard. So we're going to go ahead and move up over here, see if we can get anything. Very nice. We have a Leopard 1 kill. But, um, you know, overall, I mean, the Heat FS, don't get me wrong, is very good. It's just, eh. You know, I mean, like, in my opinion, having 1,620 meters per second of uh, rate of fire does substantially more, at least in my opinion, than a, uh, you know, than, again, having slightly better um, armor pen throughout the the uh, range, 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 the range spectrum, I guess, might be able to say it. But not too bad. I mean, two kills, two assists thus far. Okay, we have an enemy. Had an enemy. That's another reason why I prefer it. In my opinion, and I know I just shot that guy when he was sitting at his own base. Don't get me wrong, I know that, but there's literally nowhere else I can go. But in my opinion, again, the APDS also has better uh, post-pen damage. At least, again, in my opinion, it is a bit superior compared to... Um, other vehicles that, that we currently, or um, other ammunition types like Heat FS, where that just kind of punches straight through. Like I said, if you're facing an M103, uh, it is going to be superior, the Heat FS that is. However, otherwise, APDS plus, when you get into up tiers, Heat FS no longer really matters. I mean, like, the, the range in which Heat FS is a really, really good shell is pretty small in terms of its BR range. Whereas APDS, APFSDS, it's a pretty wide range. That said, another match. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but I would say probably the two biggest issues with this vehicle are going to be, at least in my opinion, the meh turret traverse rate. So, in what I have now, it's like 16 degrees per second. With an expert crew, of course, the horizontal turret drive, and also the reload rate. Uh, now, that reload rate, again, expert crew, uh, I really should have got the hit. Very nice. It's an expert crew, which is cool and all, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's just not incredibly effective, um, all things considered. Okay, perfect. We have ourselves the assist. Again, 
if you guys don't know, I do not mind assists. Uh, because ultimately that just means that we are going to be closer to winning. Which is the ultimate stat, really. But a 15.9 second reload at this BR is a bit rough. It is better than what you have in so many other vehicles with a cannon this size throughout pretty much all of War Thunder. But at 8.3 BR, eh, you know, I mean, like, unless you're in a down tier, it's just a little bit rough. Okay, that was an enemy right there, and I feel really, really stupid for not seeing him. But I did get the kill. Very nice. That's ultimately the most important thing, I reckon. So, with that being said, uh, again, I mean, like, this is one of those vehicles that, despite its weight, can actually be used in, at least to a point, in a flanking role, which is phenomenal. Uh, again, not really something that a lot of people would expect from this. Um, uh, let's see if we can go take out that M48, I believe it was. Okay, there he is. Got the kill. Not too bad. We're gonna have a few enemies up here. My main concern, again, is that reload rate. So I can't really just engage these people all willy-nilly. I have to kind of be a little sneaky-breaky. And here we go. Kill number one back up and hope no one sees me and we do have smoke grenades however they're just kind of these barrels hanging off the back which is not ideal by any means uh, because of course you can't project them out in front of you ooh that is a uh, whatchamacallit a mouse which is uh, not ideal so I'm gonna go take out this guy first if I can help it unless that mouse is looking like he's gonna come up get healthy okay that's perfect that's a mouse what is going on here there are there's a whole lot of mouse action going on here and there we go if you guys don't know shooting to the right of the uh, of the gun if you're facing it is going to work out uh, because that's typically where the gunner is going to be Okay, we have an enemy there, got the driver, engine, suspension, and we also have pretty much an auto cannon, but we only have an assist. Kind of sucks, but not too bad. Can't complain about that. Now, this 14.5 millimeter cannon can shoot through, or MG, so to speak, can shoot through, I think, over 40 millimeters of armor at max, which is phenomenal. It essentially makes it, like I said, kind of like a mini auto cannon. I think that's the same caliber of shell that was used in World War II uh, for, like, the PTRS and the PTRD anti-armor rifles, which is just crazy. One thing I may have forgotten to mention is the fact that the... Ooh, how far away is that fella? I'm just gonna shoot. Let's see if I can hit him. Ooh, -hoo -hoo! I indeed can. Now, one of the things I was going to say was that this vehicle, unfortunately, uh, does have a really gnarly, a really bad, rather, cannon depression. So it's only got four degrees of depression, which is just terrible. And sounds like a really bad song from the 90s. But four degrees of cannon depression is not good at all. Uh, even as far as I remember, most Soviet tanks are like, what, five, six? This is lower than even that, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and see if we can shoot in the back, get the kill, and we can. Got the commander. If you guys don't know, the Stridsvagen 103 can be, uh, base. Ooh, let's see if I can help this guy. Can be manned by one person, and that's it. Okay, we have ourselves a loader and engine hit. Now, again... As I said earlier, I really don't mind getting assists. Assists are not a bad thing in my opinion. Got one kill to assist. That is totally cool by me, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we have an enemy T something or the other. Got the kill. Type 69. Nice. And that was a sniper? Really? That must have been on like the inside, like on the, the low end of getting the sniper reward. Okay, we somehow got a kill there. Uh, sometimes there are some really rare instances of this 
where you see like a a marker that an enemy is somewhere and then you just kind of shoot there and you get the kill okay we have ourselves enemies <laughs> I love it so let's just kind of finish off I think did I already go over some strengths and weaknesses? I'm not even sure but assuming I didn't the probably the biggest strength of this vehicle is going to be its cannon now as you probably notice I do not have the uh, APCBC I think it is with the uh, high explosive filler which honestly I probably should uh, so I'm making a little bit of a, a mockery here I'm taking a little bit of a chance uh, but you know such is war thunder you take these chances and you kind of do what you can with them and that's fine you know we we all love doing stuff that I'm not even making any sense right here but you know what I mean very nice we have ourselves a kill and then of course we have this guy right over here who wants to do something but hopefully will not got the kill assist don't really mind getting two kill assists in rapid succession that is totally cool like I said I'm down with the cool kill assist with a cool assist right so let's just keep on moving on not too shibby dibby dabby two kill assist one kill looks like we have ourselves an spaa that needs some new paint i don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean but it's supposed to be a cool way to say it now when it comes to the strengths and weaknesses of this vehicle first and foremost i would say that it's got an excellent cannon very powerful ammunition regardless of what you want to use you know i mean of course apds that's kind of my preferred thing however of course you can use the apcbc or the heat fs i feel that they are all legitimate and valid options genuinely they all have excellent power and they can all do uh, a number of different things pretty damn well including going after a horizontal turret drive look at that let's go see if we can go knock out track and we have another kill assist not too bad and then we have french tanks because who doesn't love french tanks he's not gonna get the kill why would he get a kill i really hope nothing bad happens to me but bad things are going to happen to me can i get it ah farts well we can at least knock out his other track and i got the kill somehow oh you know what he let himself remain on fire look at that that's why i always put out the fire boys anyways just kind of going back before we get into the fight here about some strengths and weaknesses the biggest weakness of this is probably going to be its reload uh it's 15.9 seconds with a fully expert crew which is decent for a 122 from the soviets but not good at all relative to other vehicles at this br especially french tanks as you saw there i think that most of them have like a four to six second reload but your average around this br is going to be anywhere from like seven to nine maybe nine and a half so 15.9 is too much additionally the turret traverse on this isn't great and while it does have a really nice level of mobility for a tank like this it's really one of the last heavy tanks and that's for a reason you know it's a 50 ton tank which itself isn't really all that heavy uh relatively speaking for for most modern tanks however again you are dealing with what is basically considered to be a heavy tank uh, by Soviet and, and Western standards as well. So this thing is slow compared to other vehicles to a point, not terrible, but it is relatively quick for a heavy tank, if that makes any sense. Turret Traverse, again, mediocre, not very good. Of course, it doesn't have much side armor. Uh, the turret armor is very nice at the front, 250 millimeters, so that's an excellent strength. It's got the 14.5s, which I think I was able to get a few kills with during this video um, those are obviously very very powerful as you can probably see right there this guy is just trying to shoot right through and now i've got my 14.5s back and he is toast there you go that's my kill with the 14.5 again as i said before i'm pretty sure that's the same caliber of shell that they used for their anti-tank guns in World War II, the Russians. So it is a nasty, nasty shell. 
Got that. Ooh, this is not good. However, that's just a tiger. Really? It's also really good for taking out tracks, mind you. So, really don't want to get on his bad side here. And we got ourselves another kill assist. Now, I think there is some truth to it by saying that if I had the APCBC, I probably would be getting a higher percentage of kills rather than all these kill assists that I've been getting. But again, I'm not really sure. Ooh, that's not good. Did not mean to shoot somebody who was right uh, coming out of their base. Sometimes it's difficult to distinguish if you're not always looking at the minimap. In general, this is a very, very powerful vehicle. Again, great armament. Good armor at the front, despite the fact that it doesn't have any composites. If this thing had composites, it would be wonderful. I mean, absolutely amazing. I would love it. And then some. But unfortunately, we don't have that. And now I have to uh, repair. So before you say anything, yes, I know I'm about to die. That's totally fine. I don't really care about dying in this game so much. <laughs> I didn't expect it to come like that, though. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you don't mind, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the T10M. I mean, I think it's a good vehicle, but it really shows a lot about uh, Russian vehicle, like about heavy tanks around this BR. I mean, there's a reason why they no longer exist in modern combat and why the T10M, the M103, and to a point like the Object 279 vehicles like that, that was pretty much the end of the line for the heavy tank for a reason. So thanks so much. And I'll see you all on the other side. That was funny. Take care, everyone. Oh, look at that. We got the assist.